In this lesson, we're going to focus on the relationship between pressure and volume. So before we do that, let's refresh ourselves on the units for pressure, temperature, and volume. You should have these memorized, be able to rattle them off the top of your head very quickly. There's two units for pressure we are going to use, ATM for atmospheres and MMHG, which stands for millimeters of mercury. Temperature, the units are degrees Celsius, degrees Fahrenheit, or Kelvin. And for volume, you will see milliliters, liters, or centimeters cubed. Since this lesson talks about the relationship between pressure and volume, if we look at the combined gas law, P1, V1 over T1, equals P2, V2 over T2. Since we're only discussing pressure and volume, we can essentially eliminate temperature. So if we rewrite this, we have a relationship that says P1, V1, equals P2, V2. So remember, when these two variables are next to each other, that means they are being multiplied. So the relationship between pressure and volume is different than the relationships between pressure and temperature and volume and temperature. Because pressure and volume are in, this is an I, in, directly related. And the way to remember this is the prefix in means not. So pressure and volume are not directly related which means they behave in opposite directions. So, if the pressure of a gas goes up, the volume of that gas goes down. They move in opposite directions. Another way of saying that is if the pressure of a gas goes down, the volume of that gas is going to go up. If this was graphed, this would have a negative slope on an xy plane, meaning that the variables are moving in opposite directions from each other. If one goes up, the other goes down. So let's apply that knowledge to two problems, one qualitative and one quantitative on the next slide. So problem number one says, a balloon is carried to the top of Mount Everest where the pressure drops considerably. What will happen to the size of the balloon? Okay, well, let's see what is happening. We got a balloon here, we're taking it to the top of Mount Everest, and the pressure is dropping. So, pressure is going down. And the problem is asking what's going to happen to the size of the balloon. So, size, remember, how big an object is, is its volume. So, we're relating pressure and volume here. Well, we know that if pressure goes down, volume must go up because they are indirectly related. So we would say the volume of the balloon would increase. That would be the answer number one, qualitatively. Number two is quantitative, using numbers. So number two says the pressure at the top of Mount Everest is 0 0.5 atm, while it is 1 atm at the bottom. That word should say bottom. If the balloon has a volume of 24 liters at the bottom of the mountain, what will its volume be at the top? Remember, always annotate, circle your givens, underline your unknown. So since we're dealing with ATM, that's pressure, and liters, that's volume, we're going to use the relationship P1V1 equals P2V2. Now it's about plugging in the correct values. Our Initial pressure at the bottom of the mountain is 1 atm. Our initial volume at the bottom of the mountain is 24 liters. The pressure at the top of the mountain is uh, 0 0.5 atm. And we don't know the final volume. That's what we're trying to figure out. So the way to solve this, we got to get V2 by itself. 24 times 1 is 24, equals 0 0.5 times V2, divide by 0 0.5 on both sides, 
24 divided by 0.5 gives you a final answer of V2, 48 liters. So let's check ourselves. We said, number one, the volume is supposed to go up because the pressure decreased. Did that happen? Well, we started at 24 liters and we ended up at 48. So yes, indeed, the volume went up. Our answer makes sense. So take a minute to look over these problems. If you're not sure, pause the video, go back and watch this again. Then if you're feeling ready, on the next slide there are two problems to practice by yourself. So go ahead and attempt these two problems by yourself right now. Pause the video to do that. When you're done answering the two questions and you want to check your answer, hit play and I'll go over the answer to the two questions. So number three asks, what will happen to the size of a piston, size being volume, if the pressure of the gas inside increases? So pressure is going up. We want to know what's going to happen to volume. Since they're indirectly related, the volume would go down. So the reason would be that pressure and volume are indirectly related. Number four, the piston starts at a pressure of two atm and a volume of four liters. The a force is applied decreasing the volume until the pressure is doubled. So the new pressure is going to be doubled the old pressure, so 2 times 2 gives us 4 atm. So we got to go ahead and plug these values in because we want to figure out the final volume. So we have 2 atm, P1 times 4, V1 equals P2, 4, times our V2. Solve our V2. Well, 8 equals 4 times V2. Divide both sides by 4. V2 equals 2 liters. And check yourself. Did the volume decrease? It went from 4 to 2. Check. Boom. If you're feeling confident in these problems, go ahead and log on to Exit Ticket on your iPod or Chromebook and answer the Exit Ticket questions for more practice to master this learning target.